Kyrie, you guys had a 21 forced turnovers tonight. I think you had defensive effort the whole team tonight. We were good. Really good tonight. Oh, shoot. Man, out there, being out there a few times, it, it felt like we had some breakdowns, but uh, I'm glad that the, the stats reflect uh, kind of how hard we were playing. And uh, one of the toughest games to win is coming off a long road trip. So uh, we definitely answered that call tonight. Proud of the guys. And we really battled tonight. Um, they were coming off a back to back. Uh, so we kind of knew that they would eventually, you know, run into some gas problems or some depth problems. They ran into some foul trouble uh, as well. DeAndre Hunter was out of the game. So it was a big uh, stretch in the game where we had to make our run, make our push, and I'm grateful we did that. Kyrie, we know how last season ended. You even told me last month you guys know what it feels like to fail. Mm -hmm. that feeling in mind, how does it feel to clinch a playoff spot? Uh, shoot, man, I got a meme in my, my photos. You know how us, us professional athletes love memes that the media puts out. I think ESPN gave us a D, like a great D for the trade of me coming here. So I think us clinching the playoff spot and putting ourselves in great position um, definitely answers some of those questions that were asked last season and um, some some of the naysayers and all that stuff. Uh, it's a uh, you know, great moment to again, answer those questions and succeed and clinch in the playoff spot. Deeming feeling at all with it or not really? I mean, life is about redemption, man, um, especially in sports where anybody could say anything and, you know, something could happen the next day or the next two weeks or next few months that leads you to succeeding at a very high level or failing at a high level. I mean, just to, just comes with it. So it's always, you know, about redemption. Every day you wake up and just try to strive to be better. So feels good. Obviously, kind of a bigger goal of getting into the top six and one of the guaranteed playoff spots. There's so many scenarios there. Is it almost, does it simplify it just to know winning is really the only thing that matters and you can't really worry about how all that's going to shake out? Yeah, that's why we're in the business, to win. What was it like? I mean, Luca picks up the first, the quick uh, two fouls. And, uh, to have uh, yourself and, and, and a, a D. Jones and uh, PJ and those guys all kind of chip in and get uh, hold the fort down and so forth. Yeah, how much uh, does that help a, a team's confidence, on, especially a team that's already playing pretty well? Oh man, I mean, <laughs> PJ started off the game really well, and uh, not every game is going to start off that way. But when it's needed, I think we all have to kind of galvanize around each other and just be ready for any scenario. You know, we start off the game and shots are going in or shots are not going in. We're going to have to rely on each other, especially on the defensive end. And then offensively, I, I feel like, um, you know, we'll take care of it. It's just we got to get great shots. Once we started getting into the paint and started making some easy ones for each other or creating easier opportunities for each other, I felt like we created that separation. So the start of the game, um, we didn't start the way we wanted to. I think collectively as a group, we had some guys that filled in, you know, two points there, four points there. But... Once we got it going at collectively as a group, then we were hard to stop. What have you seen from PJ? He had that tough stretch in March, you know, with the shot. Talk tonight about getting in the gym, working on his footwork. You know, obviously it feels good to have a night like he had tonight. What have you seen with him working through that and getting back in a flow? Uh, it feels good to see him continue to put in that work. I mean, this is what, <clears throat> you know, you sign up for basketball for when you want to become a professional is to continue to get better and, He's on a better team now. No disrespect to Charlotte Hornets, but just, you know, he's on a better team where the shots matter and we need him to make those shots and we have the confidence in him. And when he's not making them, not, you know, that's not the time to give him anything less than encouragement. You know, like we need to continue to feed him that confidence. And when he's playing well on the defensive end, I think that feeds his, his offensive capabilities. And when he's getting wide open looks and um, starts off the game with it and he makes his first, that makes a big difference. But, uh, now we just get into the next phase of all our maturity, right? Where if we're not making shots, we just continue to fire away. And, you know, some people may not like that statement, but we got to continue to fire away on the open looks and, um, you know, trust that our work will show showcase at the right time. Kyrie, kind of going off of your intro song as you were walking in singing uh, Boss Man D-Lo. How much is music a part of your pregame ritual or just your life in general to help you kind of... I mean, music influences humanity a deep way, so it influences me too. Um, I love every genre of music and, you know, listen to Sam Cooke before the game and, you know, Boss Man Dilo's, you know, ringing in my head right now as well as he's taking over this younger generation. But, uh, yes, yeah, it, it gets me going, it gets our team going. Um, 
And I think because we have such an international team and such a diverse team, you know, one day we're listening to Serbian music and the next day we're listening to Boss Man D-Lo. It's just everything on the spectrum is, is pretty cool. So that's the luxury of being on this team. How much is Serbian song? My favorite Serbian song, the one where we tip the singers hundreds of dollars. If you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was, don't look too deep in any of that. That's for Luca. That's for Luca, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Oh man, what are you saying? Go ahead. <laughs> what did you see out of rookie? Again, not just his- what a name too. Yeah. What a name, man. Oh man, he was challenging me, and um, I'm really appreciative of that. Um, you know, just a, a young point guard coming into the league and really being able to establish himself and um, you know, showcase his, his talent, man. That's that's what it's about. He got the opportunity. He took full advantage of it. He played well um, and, and hopefully keeps it going towards the end of the season. So I want to see guys like that do well. You know, any young player that comes in and challenges me gets my respect. Um, so just a, grateful that we can see this next generation um, taking that competitive edge to a, a new level and no fear out there. You know, it's competition. How much defensively does does is effort contagious? Does it build on each other? I, I mean, I guess I, we've seen situations where there is not as much effort, and then for an individual player, wh- why would you give effort if nobody else around you is? Is is that true in the inverse where you feel if you see someone really trying, really putting in effort out? What are you getting at? Do what? What are you getting at right now? What are you talking about? Just if you can simplify that question, that was a lot. But just, you're talking about when one guy's playing defense. And you mentioned PJ and you mentioned Charlotte and mm-hmm. you mentioned the responsibilities of being on a better team. Yeah, yeah. Is trying is that something where you can't let your teammates down because you see how okay. they're working? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, <clears throat> that's a, a internal thing, and um, it's also a camaraderie thing. It's a chemistry uh, aspect. It's it's a trust aspect, and it's also most importantly, it's um, an attitude and effort. Um, once you have those controllables figured out, uh, then you can start talking about body positioning and then also uh, just natural talents and gifts, just guys having longer wingspans and being defensive-minded players since they were young or playing different roles. Uh, you just hope when guys come on a team that uh, they're able to assimilate a little bit easier and they don't have kind of those rough patches where they're trying to overthink the game. It's basketball at the end of the day. We have coaches that study the game for hours. We have players on our team that study the game for hours. We have upper management that looks for talent out there for us. So um, once they put the group together, then it's on us as, as leaders and, um, you know, as teammates to be there for one another and teach the game. That's that's an aspect that we don't talk about as peers is how well guys teach the game. And, you know, you can be very good at defense and teach it to somebody or very good at offense. So it's just picking your spots and, you know, giving that effort that's necessary. Kyrie, after the game, I saw you embrace um, Dirk. Say what's up to him. Yeah, shout out to the legend, man, the statue. Yeah, I don't know what y'all's relationship <laughs> been here long enough where you kind of understand what Dirk means what would you say that Dirk means to the Dallas Mavericks from what you understand oh man oh shoot (laughs) I can tell you what he means to the broader basketball culture because I mean but I think for Dallas in general he created a culture of of championship winning and um, MVP like performances a lot of game winners uh, playing with a lot of the legends in the league you know if you look at the names that are on the floor you see a lot of legendary names that have come through Dallas um, and help build this franchise to be where it is today. Uh, although it's only one championship, uh, a lot of franchises can't say the same that they've won a championship. So that means something. And uh, in the basketball cultural world and in sports world, and just the respect that I have for him as a peer um, and as a, as a little brother, right? <clears throat> so I look at Dirk as someone I could always go to if I need um, some resources or advice and um you know, just hearing about the quality of human being he is and how much he influenced Luca and other guys that have come in through here. It's nothing but positive things. So uh, he had his ups and downs, just like every great pro. Won a lot of games, lost some games. Um, but the respect and the love that I have for him is just unconditional. You know, he, he set the standard here and he's built a large legacy that uh, other guys want to follow. PJ, y'all uh, forced 21 turnovers tonight. Just talk to me about your defense tonight. Uh, we wanted to be aggressive with them. Obviously, we felt like uh, they're a great team. They won six out of the last seven. So uh, we wanted to come in and protect home court coming off a, a loss in Golden State. So um, I think everybody bought into the defensive end, and uh, we were connected and, and talked the whole game. So uh, I think we did good on that end. 
you made some big threes tonight during that 10-0 run at the end of the half, and then when they got within 10 points late in the fourth quarter, another big one to push it back to double digits. Talk about your confidence in those moments and how comfortable you've become in this offense. Um, my confidence has been growing each and every game. Um, obviously, I've been in the, in the gym working on my shot. So for me, it's just take it with confidence and uh, just step into it and make sure my foot works right. So uh, obviously, they went in tonight, but I mean, I'm not going to say they will go in every night. So for me, just trying to uh, be consistent doing the same thing uh, with my footwork. You guys haven't lost back-to-back games in a month. Can you speak on the resilience of this group? being able to kind of bounce back? I think it just shows our uh, our toughness. And for us, I mean, like I said, we had to come in and protect home court. So everybody was locked in and, and ready to play. Um, and uh, hats off to everybody. I mean, we stepped in and, and did everything we were supposed to do um, and played like a team tonight. you feel like you guys are playing your best ball right now or on your way toward playing your best ball? Yes, sir. I mean, I feel like we're in a good place. Um, everybody's buying in. Everybody's playing together. And everybody's happy for each other. So... Uh, it's great to be on a team like this, and I'm just excited. PJ, first of all, how's it feel to be home after a long road trip that y'all had? Man, <laughs> so excited. I can't wait to go get my bed, so just happy to be back. And then you hold the team under 100 points. What do you like defensively that you're seeing from yourself in this team? Uh, I feel like we're buying in. Um especially on a, on a, on that end, just locking in the personnel, um, not letting guys get into a rhythm, and uh, just trying to be aggressive on that end and be physical. I feel like our physicality has is, is grown, and uh, I feel like that's a reason why uh, we're a lot better on defense. How do you feel about now for you, you're, you're going to be playing past game 82 for the first time? It feels great. I mean, I just can't wait. Um, I've been talking about it the whole time since I've been here, so uh, I'm just excited to obviously get a taste of postseason play, and uh, I just can't wait for it. PJ, a few weeks ago during practice, you were telling us just you haven't seen this many in and outs in your life. Yeah. And now they're starting to fall like 44% over the last six games. How much easier does it make the game for you when you're knocking down threes at a high rate? Uh, the game just, I mean, it comes simple at that point. So for me, uh, obviously, Luca's uh, been great passing the ball and everybody else as well and uh, still in confidence in me. So for me, just uh, like I said earlier, just footwork and uh, just taking the open ones. And uh, credit to my teammates for trusting me. Try to be uh, disruptive on defense and get as many deflections and, and steals and block shots that we can so we can go the other way and score the ball. I see you looking at the uh, box score sheet. What stands out to you the most? Uh, I ain't really look at it that much, but <laughs> shit. What's that? Nice little glance. I don't know. I mean, we, we held them to shooting 34 from the three. That's that's good, but I mean I just like the way we played overall. Man, it was a close game in the first half, and then we kind of put our foot on their throat man, and took it all, took it away. How does it feel to rise up for a dunk like you had there in the second half? <laughs> it's, it's just another dunk for me. I mean, I, mean, <laughs> I, I told y'all before that's probably that's probably not even close to my top fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Beyond the that was a, a basic one hand dunk. Do you have to do any sort of uh, recovery after a game when you dunk? Like, do you have to ice your hands? <laughs> Is there a certain lotion or what? <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't. The rim don't hurt me. I, I guess I don't dunk the ball that hard. I mean, I do, but no, I, I don't have no pain from from dunking the ball. Me personally. Most people don't jump as high as you. That's true. Prince. Yeah, that's true. I, I throw the ball in a lot too. What what happened? What happened on the alley oop? Uh, I didn't, no, 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 I didn't jump high enough. That was on me. I, I didn't, I didn't think Kyle was going to make me try to jump to my highest ability. So, you know, next time I'm going to get it, for sure. Next time I'm going to get it. Let's talk about it after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get it next time though. So what's your vertical? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't checked my vert since I was like, was in my senior year in high school. But yeah, I don't know yet. Yeah, I guess we got to check that out. What was it then? Then it was a 43 or 44. That was good to stand on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I said, I don't, when, I'm, when I'm down there and I get to get that one, two and, and, and take off, I don't really, I don't really think it's, it's many people that's going to try to jump with me. If I'm in the air first, it's over. <laughs> From your perspective, what's been the catalyst that's uh, made y'all's defense what it is now? Uh, 
like you said, we're getting a lot of turnovers, like forcing a lot of turnovers, getting deflections, and just slowing their defense, I mean, slowing their offense down, keeping keeping players in front of us, sliding our feet, and always being there to help one another. I mean, that's probably the most thing. You're just always there for each other. Eric, both Kid and PJ talked about the team's chemistry and kind of the vibe of the team so far. How much fun is it to play with a group of guys when y'all are winning like this? That's amazing. I mean, winning a game of basketball is always great, but and the chemistry that we have together, the the bond that we, we we're building together is, is great. And, I mean, I love it. We all we all out there having fun and we enjoying each other's success. And that's that's the, that's the main thing. We all out there having fun and enjoying each other. So. That's all I can say. Jason, can you talk about the confidence you have in P.J. Washington and his growth since coming over? Yeah, I think um, uh, since he's been, when you talk about P.J. being here, we've always trusted, um, and you can see that on both ends, offensively and defensively. Um, we've always graded him on the defensive end, um, you know, understanding that he's going to get good looks. He's gonna He can put the ball on the floor. He, his mid-range game is as good as anyone's. Um, and so, again, tonight the bounce back for him being able to knock down the three for us uh, helped us. Um, and so um, we would love for him to do that every night. But we don't judge him on making threes. We we love what he does for us on the defensive end. Does this kind of game show he can be a third option in certain games? Yeah, well, anyone can be the third option. We know we got the one and two. Um, and it's and it's open for, you know, anyone to step into that third seat and uh our two stars are going to create you know open looks for that for not just uh pj but for dj i thought he was great being able to put the ball on the floor drive it uh, make plays for his teammates but also get to the rim um those two have been incredible for us on the defensive end um and so uh tonight we were a little tired first game back from a long road trip but I thought the chemistry and trust uh, was shown again. Um, it wasn't pretty, but we, we did what we had to do, and that was to get the win. How did you feel about the way – I mean, Luke obviously picks up two quick ones, and then but you guys hold the fort down while he's out, and then he goes kind of nuts in the second and third. Yeah, I think um, that's – you know, that's why it's called the Mavericks. It's his team. You know, I think uh, Luca gets in foul trouble. This is a great scenario. It uh, could happen in a – in a big game, it can happen in the playoffs. You know, someone else has to step up. I thought Kai bringing Kai back early, uh, he takes the reins and uh, Exum and those guys fall into place and and help us uh, get back in the game. And I thought the tempo um, was uh, was at a high. Um, we just couldn't make shots there. Again, just stay in the course, trust. You know, the ball's touching the paint. Um, we tried to get out and run, um, but give uh, the Hawks credit there. Early on, they were making threes. We tried to get them off the three three point line, but they did a good job of making them. But this is a team, you know, and uh, being able to, as role players to pick up your stars uh, like they did tonight that's big. How important is it to you play your best basketball this time of year and with the playoffs about ten days away? But also, is there a fear that you don't want to peak too early as well? It's a great question because you can ask that in December and January uh, and, and peaking too early. Um, but I understand playing your best basketball this time of the year, March, April, May, June, it gives you a chance to win a championship, and that's what we're playing for. Um, now, going through different scenarios in, in January or December, um, that's what you know the season's for is to figure out and find out who you are, and uh, that's you know what we've done. Um, we, I think, understand who we are. Um, again, holding a team under 100 points, um, is big, and it just shows that our defense is at a high level. And, um, again, we're creating the open shots. We just haven't made them. And so um, there is a theory. Um, once the playoff starts, we're going to make all those shots and continue to play that defense. So we'll see. What do you think have been the biggest factors in the defensive turnaround over the last month and change? Uh, just uh, just understand what we're asking them to do. Um, again, I think I've said this before, sometimes it just takes some time. Um, but when you get – uh, two players like Gaff and uh, PJ athletically, um, and then also they they think about the defensive end too. And so uh, being able to get those two and having those two start uh, sets the tone for us. And then being able, uh, again, having uh, Derek Jones Jr., he's done that for us all season. And so to have those three out there to start uh, puts us in a, in a positive position on the defensive end. Coach, I believe you all forced, I think, 21 turnovers tonight. Yes. 
obviously rim protecting is huge, but just turnovers, getting turnovers. How big is that for this team? It's huge when we're not scoring. Um, I mean, it was a beautiful fourth with 14 to 16. Um, but just understanding um, if we're not making shots, we got to play the defensive end, and that's rebounding the ball, but also being able to get steals. And if we can get steals and get out and run and get some easy ones, that takes a little pressure off of our uh, shooting. What did you see after Kobe Buff game when he started? What's, I missed the first part, sorry. Um, out of Kobe Buffkin week. Yeah, he, I thought a young player, uh, lefty, I, I thought he played well for him. Um, he, he shot the three, uh, the midi, he got to the basket. Um, I think, again, uh, he's a young, talented uh, player for Atlanta. It was good tonight. Jason, when you make a decision to do a coach's challenge, it's obviously for the betterment of the game, but do you ever see that return on investment energy-wise from your guys when they see that you're actively fighting for them? Yeah, I'm actively fighting, but they are also challenging themselves. I think the league is going to change the rule that the players can just automatically make the challenge. Um, the, the, <laughs> so they so they can so they can take take the middleman out. <laughs> That's just a joke. Um, <laughs> no, I am fighting um, every possession this time of year, but every game is important, um, and so you want to make sure that you have a good chance of winning, but. Um, sometimes challenges are used a little bit differently. Um, even if you think you're going to lose one, um, especially if you don't want to take that group out, it could be used as a longer timeout. Um, so there's a lot of different things that go into that. But I am fighting for those guys. But I also trust uh, when they tell me um, if the ball is out or if they didn't foul that, that I'm a rock with them. And so that there's a trust between player and coach. Coach Kidd, with P.J. Washington, you already asked about him, but over the last six games, he's shooting above 40% from downtown. How much does it help y'all when he's shooting at a high clip when you you know his value as a defender, but his value as a shooter as well? Yeah, it's, it's, it makes the game easy. you know. And if you can make the game easy, that's what we're trying to strive for. Um, Luca and Kai you know, do the heavy lifting of creating the double teams or being able to find the open guy. Um, and maybe if, uh, you know, since you guys are writing about his struggles, he uh, probably took that a little personal, and it, it's helped. Um, and it's just a joke, too. But um, just understanding that he he's important to us, and I've said this before, you know, Timmy and, and PJ, we need them to be able to uh, make shots. It's not pressure. Um, this just makes the game simple and fun for the, for the other guys because they're going to get double teamed. And uh, Gaff didn't have his great game, game tonight at the rim, but again, for Gaff to be able to catch and finish uh, just makes the game easy because those two are going to get double teamed.